We're Yvonne and Jeremy, and we're slow traveling the world on a budget. In today's video, we spend a week enjoying some of the most beautiful mountains we've ever seen, the Dolomites in Northern Italy. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to a brand new video. This morning we left Venice and now we're driving up to Cortina d'Ampezzo where we're going to be spending a week exploring this region of the Dolomites. So we're super excited, let's go! Picked up a few groceries for the week, we rested for the evening, eagerly anticipating the glorious mountains we'd see the next day. Good morning everyone and welcome to a brand new day. Today we're going to be going up the Trecime Trail and just driving up this morning was absolutely gorgeous. So there's a counter for cars going into this parking lot and we're at the tow booth now and there are 279 spots left. Wow, we're so high up in elevation right now, we're going into the clouds. From the parking lot here, it's already so pretty. I think this whole day I'm just going to be smiling so much. It's pretty cold out here. Good thing we have layers. So from the start, we're already hiking next to these gorgeous mountains. Wow. The sun's out and we're taking off layers. That rock right there looks like a dog's head. <laughs> Every direction, 360, and it's only gonna get better. Looks like my three fingers! Look at that! It looks like a painting! It's crazy. We're now heading up to the refugio and that is where we will rest and go to the three lakes. Well, there's two! There are two lakes. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. This is so nice. Everywhere you look, so beautiful.
and now we're heading back. So we've descended and we're now at the lowest point of the hike, which means that from here, we have to go all the way back up. Doing this trail counterclockwise was definitely the right call. On the loop back to the parking lot, there's tons of switchbacks. It's really steep. So it's best to go in the counterclockwise direction if you can. the corner and there are all these cairns here. It kind of looks like little people just sitting down and staring at the mountains. <laughs> I feel like today is one of the happiest days of my life because everywhere you look you see a different view of the mountains and I just feel so relaxed, so peaceful the whole time. It's been such a great day and it's a great first hike in the Dolomites. We'll see you tomorrow! Okay, I know I just signed off for the night, but when we were coming down, we caught the sunset. We literally parked our car, we ran to the lake, and it was just the perfect time. I think if we were even just one minute late, we would have missed it. Good afternoon everyone. After resting up a little bit, we've driven up the side of the hill and we're here at Paso Falzarego and we're gonna go up this cable car all the way up to the top of the mountain. Excited to see these views. Beautiful weather today. Hi. Hi. <laughs> if you purchase the tickets online, you get to save one euro per ticket. So the cable car runs every 15 minutes. So we're here waiting for about 10 minutes for the next one. car takes you up within minutes and then you're up to sweeping views of the surrounding mountains. It's really gorgeous but a little bit chilly so dress warmly. Now we're gonna hike around and see some of the other different views and some World War I historical sites on the way down. So this trail is fairly easy and actually has a lot of history. So we'll be walking through some bunkers and trenches from World War I. Oh, it's really dark in there. Going through these tunnels is really, really interesting. So 
this entire rock is all filled with World War I tunnels. I kind of want to go inside every one of them. There's one over here, one over there where we just were, one down there too. Tunnels everywhere on this rock. Going through these tunnels is really, really interesting. I cannot believe that they fought parts of World War I from here. Ow. That was my head. Ow. It was so cool inside. I actually went in and then I kept calling Jeremy's name but he couldn't hear me. And then Jeremy went in and then I came back outside and I was calling him again and he couldn't hear me. all the way from up there down here okay taking the cable car up to refugio lagazoi and then walking all the way down checking out some of the world war one remnants all the way back to paso fazarego is a fantastic way to spend a partial day and you'll enjoy all the scenic mountain views all around you throughout your whole trip hope you guys enjoyed this little episode and we'll see you again tomorrow Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to yet another day in the beautiful Dolomites. The weather is absolutely perfect today, and we're in the Jiao Pass, about to take a short little walk. I feel like here in the Dolomites, there are many, many beautiful hikes. Some require a few hours of hiking, some require little to no effort. And I feel like this is one of those places you exit out of your car, and you look out and you see sweeping views of the mountains. If you get to visit the Dolomites during the fall, you not only get to see some beautiful colors, a lot of the trails and the different points of interest are a lot less trafficked. And so you get to enjoy these beautiful mountains in a peaceful environment. There are a few drawbacks in that the refugios are closed and a lot of the cable car systems are closed. So you're not perhaps able to do everything in a full way as you might be able to do during the summer season, the high season. But there are definitely some really great benefits of visiting the Dolomites in the fall. I just think that those mountains just serve as a really nice backdrop to all the hills, all the rocks, and all the yellow grasses around us. Oh, look at this valley. So cool. Just off the side of the road, there's a beautiful pond reflection of Ragusela. At sunset, it's just absolutely beautiful, just seeing the reflection in this very, very still pond. And a bunch of photographers will be there along with you as well. This is one of those spots where you can see a reflection of the mountains at sunset, and we highly recommend it. Good morning everyone, it's a brand new day and this morning we have driven all the way out to the iconic Lago de Brajes. This is how you know where to get the best photos is look for the photographers. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's good to come early in the morning before the boats ruin the stillness of the water.
these ducks are so funny. Definitely worth it to come to Lago de Bryce early in the morning so the water is still while the boats aren't moving on top of the water. And it's beautiful to just watch the reflection. Definitely recommend this place. All right, we've now driven up the road to Prato Piazza. She broke out the sunglasses. So <laughs> So we stopped by the refugio for some hot drinks. So we're going to be following Trail 40, ultimately going to Monte Spessi. But we'll be passing by some of these places along the way. So because the Dolomites region of Italy is actually near the border with Austria, there is apparently some disputes over the territory earlier in the 20th century. A lot of the signage and a lot of people might speak German or Italian or both. <laughs> I think I'm done. <laughs> I was cold at lunch and I put everything on. I looked like a bean, but now we went around the mountain and it's very hot. Now I have to take all this off. So Mount Spessier is one of the easiest summits to get to in the Dolomites. The whole trail is relatively low effort with just a little bit of uphill at the end. And at the top, you're rewarded with a 360 view of the mountains. There's also a wooden cross at the top. There's also a very informative sign of all the mountains that you see and their respective elevations. Good morning everyone and welcome to another beautiful fall day here in the Dolomites. Today we are hiking to the Lago di Serapis. So excited to see these beautiful fall colors and the wonderful lake views. It's a beautiful day and it's mostly flat so far at the beginning of this hike. So the very first part of the trail is just very, very lightly downhill. And after you pass the little waterfall, then you start going up. Oh, this fall foliage is so pretty. Golden larches. We should almost be there, but that last little bit is definitely the most strenuous part. It's just straight uphill. Now we're going up the stairs. So now we've reached a part of the trail where we have to be on the side of the mountain and hang on to the ropes. Oh, these are all like steel. <laughs> This is why the ropes are necessary. This drop would be super treacherous if you were to drop.
it's mostly dry. The color of the water is nice. But yeah, it's kind of disappointing that there's not more water. Unfortunately, the lake is mostly dried up, but it's still a very beautiful turquoise color. There's some powdery, like chalky, sandy material um, around the lake, so maybe that's what gives it that color. It's a little bit disappointing that most of the lake is dried up. I'm just imagining that probably in the springtime, this whole area is just milky, chalky, turquoise. Reality. Oh, my shoes are gross. Oh no, what happened to your shoes? The reality of visiting Lago de Serapis in the fall is I wrecked my shoes in the bottom of my pants and I have to do another load of laundry tonight. I mean, you're, you're walking where the lake would be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just chalky silt, you know, like glacier silt. Oh, I see. Come closer. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh my gosh. See? Oh. Laundry tonight. Honestly, going to Lago di Sorapis is probably not our top recommendation if you're visiting the Dolomites in the fall. It just seems like it would be much more spectacular at a different time of year. And with that, we're gonna head back. So we're back at the trailhead at Golden Hour, and look at this. So, so, so beautiful. Those golden larches, those greens on the hills, the light hitting the mountains. This is definitely a wonderful treat at the end of the hike. It's our last day here in the Dolomites. It's coming to an end all too quickly and we're finishing it off with a memorable trail to Lago Ferreira. And we're gonna go on trail 47 and then 434 and down to the lake right here. This might be kind of funny, but walking on these dirt paths with rocks is one of my favorite sounds. And <laughs> that's like what I'm thinking the whole time I'm walking on this trail. It's very quiet, it's very peaceful, and it's just us and our footsteps. I'm not gonna lie guys, this looks pretty steep. We've been going pretty steadily uphill for a little while now, but I just have to say I'm really thankful that this week we happened upon really great weather. Just looking online, it seems that by mid to end of October, there's usually snow and a lot of the trails aren't available and a lot of the refugios are closed. So we're really thankful we've had stellar weather, no rain all week, and it's just been absolutely beautiful and pleasant. So while hiking, we're passing by a lot of hikers and they actually bring their dogs. And it's always so fun watching the dogs just enjoying nature, being in their element and running around. And I think we're at the lake now. We're almost there. It looks beautiful. Yvonne is kind of obsessed with reflection lakes recently, so that's why we're here. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so nice. Whoa. The colors are really just so beautiful at this time of the year.
is a perfect end to our all too short trip to the Dolomites. It has been absolutely gorgeous here the last few days and we can't wait to come back and try some more of the trails, especially at a time where more stuff is open. I think this lake, Lago Federa, is probably my favorite lake of all the lakes we've visited this Agreed. trip. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our fall trip to the Dolomites. Tomorrow we're headed on a big travel day, so we'll bring you along in our next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.